was the Greek philosopher Aristotle who said, good habits formed at youth make all the difference. This week we talk about money and youth, good singers and good community facilities. I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at another beautiful location in Tobago, Exora Villas in Sugar Hill, Mount Irvin. It's a tranquil property that offers lush tropical landscape and spectacular sunset views. We've also got a lot in store for you in the next half hour as we recap the major events on the island over the past week. So stay with us as we bring you all the details. Tobago celebrates Global Money Week. Tima's staff beef up their disaster preparedness skills and the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018 is on. We have these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. In our top story this week, we talk about dollars and cents, money. We all know money management is not easy, and for some it requires study and effort. But as an individual progresses in life, it becomes increasingly important to understand how to manage one's money in order to live a comfortable life. Well, this training has started in Tobago with our young people. Here are the details. Money. You just can't live without it. So it's important to make the best use of your funds since, simply put, you'll always need it. And the students around Tobago are getting tips on how to be financially literate. As the island celebrated Global Money Week from March 12th to 18th, under the theme, Money Matters Matter. Sometimes it's important to write it down. Write it down. It might seem impossible. It might seem incredulous, outlandish, unbelievable. Why am I writing a goal like this? There's no way my family will be able to put together that kind of money to see me there where I would like to be. It does not matter. Put it down. Allow your entire person, your being, your beliefs, your minds, your aspirations, your emotions to be invested in that goal. And what you will find is over time, gradually, you will be aligning your behaviors with that goal. The Financial Literacy Secretariat of the Division of Finance and the Economy hosted the Youth Exposition. They wanted to promote good financial habits and increase the financial independence, stability, and responsibility of our young people. Children and young adults are uniquely impacted by household financial com complexities and new contemporary trends. Although challenging, these conditions present teachable moments for teens to learn about personal finances and money management in difficult economic times. Finance and Economy Secretary Joel Jack also says money management is a critical life skill that must be adopted at an early age. Financial education can help facilitate both parents and children with the ability to plan and to make important financial decisions. Decisions such as buying your first home, decisions such as your education, how do you prepare for retirement, and yes, you have to start thinking about growing old from now. And the students already have a better understanding of how they can become financially literate. Budgeting is when you allocate a certain amount of money towards different things such as food, shelter, clothing. Global Money Week is an annual financial awareness campaign built to inspire children and young people to learn about money matters, livelihoods, and entrepreneurship. I'm Carol Ann Wallace for Lesser Talk Tobago. This light, airy house has four spacious bedrooms and can comfortably accommodate eight persons. Whilst not situated directly on the golf course, it's just about two minutes away from the golf course and about five minutes from the Mount Irvin Beach facility. Good for you if you're heading to a beach, but as for us, we've got to stay right here to tell you about a newly renovated facility. Whether it's learning a new skill, or participating in a dance class, members of the Canaan Bonacord communities and environs can now do so in a comfortable and spacious environment, one that's been expanded to meet the growing needs of the community. Omidara Mills tells us more. Mm -hmm. 
members of the CNB Ballroom Dancers Group, delighting the audience with their skills at the commissioning of the Canaan Bonacord Multipurpose Facility. The official opening of the Multipurpose Center marked the completion of upgrades and expansion of a space where community members can now hold meetings and advance themselves in various vocational skills programs. President of the Canaan Bonacord Village Council, Wade David, says that members have already started making use of their new space. I'm proud to say that our facility has been used to host at least two dance classes. There have been classes in leather crafting, classes in wine making, bottle designing, that members of our community have utilized and they have come on board with that spirit of, of wanting to learn and to share with one another. And not only that, but to become entrepreneurs. The facility is now equipped with washroom facilities, a computer room, an office area and a kitchen in anticipation of the other activities and programs that will be available in the future. Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Marcelin Melville-Jack, says that focus should be placed on guiding more young people into taking up responsibilities in the affairs of the community. This facility should be used to love the young people in your community so much that they are empowered to become more than they even believe that they can be. Give them the opportunities to lead. The upgrades to the facility have been done at approximately $860,000 by the THE. Users of the facility have been urged to turn their skills into viable income earning avenues so that the investment will be worthwhile. We are saying that whatever skills and talents, latent as they may be, that reside in us, we must exploit those skills and talents. We must develop those skills and talents so that they work for us in ways that can allow us to earn a living. Members of the village council have furnished the center with close to 100 chairs. They have also taken the responsibility of paying for the utilities and maintaining the facilities surroundings. It is expected that the close collaboration between the village council and the assembly will continue to produce positive outcomes. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Thinking of visiting this property? Well, guests can enjoy an excellent range of amenities such as a large fully air-conditioned kitchen, dining and living areas with a balcony facing east that overlooks a well-manicured garden. And speaking of visitor, as a visitor to Tobago or a stakeholder in the tourism sector, wouldn't you love to be able to have your views on your experience in Destination Tobago officially documented? Have a look at this next report as the Ministry of Tourism has a survey that does just that. Businesses and visitors are airing their views on Destination Tobago through the Tourism Baseline Survey by the Ministry of Tourism. The survey establishes baseline data for specific tourism indicators, which will assist in tracking changes in the sector over time. It has two components, the International Visitor Experience Survey and the Business Data Survey. The International Visitor Experience Survey was started in April 2007 and will be completed by April of this year. In anticipation of this, Part 2, the Business Data Survey has been launched. In determining our short and medium term strategies, we therefore recognize and understand that these strategies must be data driven and that building a sustainable tourism sector includes the monitoring of key tourism indicators to determine whether our strategies are in fact realizing their intended targets. The business data survey will seek to collate data from stakeholders in the categories of accommodation, restaurants, tours and sightseeing, ground transport and artisans. One of the things that um, keep us back from being advanced is that we do not do quantitative surveys that will provide the kind of information that will guide what we do. And therefore, this um, consultation on the baseline survey is very critical for us here in Tobago. 
So I also want to urge you to be engaged, provide the information, not skewed, good or bad, but more or less correct what it is on the ground, the real feeling. The findings of the research will help the ministry to further develop policies and programs to improve the overall contribution of the sector, among other things. Data must constantly be gathered on the behavior patterns and the likes and dislikes of tourists. This research will be used to create more and more appealing tourism venues which will attract more tourists and tourist dollars. The Tourism Baseline Survey targets 40,000 tourists and up to 800 primary business in the tourism sector. All stakeholders of the survey will have access to the final reports. I'm Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time for a break, but when we return, we'll tell you about Tima's urban search and rescue training. So stick around. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Exquisite Villa is mainly used for holiday getaways and as a holiday getaway for the owners. It is managed by Island Investments, one of Tobago's leading real estate and villa rentals. In this next report, the Tobago community can continue to enjoy a measure of safety in the hands of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency. TEMA continues to ensure that its technicians are up to date with the most relevant disaster risk reduction strategies. Here are the details. This search and rescue event is just a drill, but in the event that it is real, Tobago now has 28 emergency responders who are certified and well-trained in light-level urban search and rescue. This means that when buildings collapse and victims lie injured on the rubble, their lives can be saved due to the newly acquired skills of technicians, like those at the Defence Force, the Fire Service, and the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA. TEMA's director, Alan Stewart, explains the goal of the six-day training exercise. One is to allow for the billing of capacity, billing resilience, as it relates to disaster risk reduction. The training course consisted of both theoretical and practical exercises. Mrs. Stewart reminded the participants that an essential component of the course is to ensure that the most appropriate and safest measures are applied to both themselves and their charges. What is key is that being impacted, you must be in a position to respond. And what you have demonstrated here over the past several days, you have placed Tobago in a place whereby we can be well assured that your bodies, minds, well-tooled and ready, trained to deliver response on the island in the event of any catastrophic event. The training has been spearheaded by TEMA in collaboration with the Office of the U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance, USAID OFDA. Additional training will be done for those selected to become instructors of this light-level urban search and rescue course. As such, it's expected that in time to come, Tobago's capacity to deal with this kind of rescue mission will increase. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. If you're feeling for a swim, then you can take a dip in the villa's swimming pool. It measures 10 by 5 meters and has a 2 meters deep end. And adjacent to the pool are permanent picnic table and benches, which give guests a chance to enjoy the small Exora garden and the light, cooling breeze which flows through the property. Now, another primary school's curriculum workshop was held by the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy to ensure that no child is left behind. It is said that having a sound education helps in the holistic development of any child. Recently, the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy spearheaded a workshop for all primary school teachers throughout the island. This workshop was intended to help teachers find suitable options to bridge learning gaps to better help students in schools. That there is always a policy position that underpins everything that we do in education, yes? 
and the policy position that underpins this new curriculum is the notion that we need to refocus on developing, finding, identifying, nurturing our ideal child. Every child learns and develops differently. And for children who have challenges with learning, they can easily feel left behind. That's why we are educators. That's why we have chosen the profession that we are, because that's where we're strong. But we are teaching to a body of students that is quite different. And maybe 10% of the students in front of us will be like us in the way that our brains work. But nevertheless, it is the job of the teacher to find those different, to find those differentiated ways to instruct, to reach the rest of them. It's not the responsibility of the child to figure out how do I teach myself. The use of technology and innovation to enhance learning has also become a critical part of the island's education system. We never stop developing and learning happens in stages. We also learn at varying rates. So initiatives like these are very useful for both our teachers and implementers and our students as beneficiaries. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The inspiration behind the villa's name, Exora, came from the lovely garden that was planted by the owners. Now the Exora plant produces a sweet nectar and is a tropical evergreen shrub. It's always good when young people can aspire to be like one of their own colleagues. One positive role model is Dexter Wilson, a past student of Bishops High School and the University of the West Indies. Dexter is now one of the recently appointed CARICOM Youth Ambassadors. Omidara Mills spoke with this young man and got an insight into his plans. Have a look. 21-year-old Dexter Wilson is now one of the two CARICOM Youth Ambassadors representing Trinidad and Tobago. This Tobago-born entrepreneur graduated from the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine, with a major in accounting and a minor in business management last year. In addition to starting his career in business, he's also decided to continue nurturing his civic-minded pursuits by becoming an advocate for young people throughout the region. I think the experiences that I've gained from being within the capacity so far has made me realize that it's just the first step it's only just the first step and it's only opening the doors for me to really get started in my career as a youth leader, as an entrepreneur and as a role model to the next generation because that's why I think I see one of the major assets or one of the major benefits of this position being giving other young people something to look forward to, something to look up to, something to aspire to, knowing especially as Tobagonian youths that we can achieve anything we set our minds to. Mr. Wilson received his instrument of appointment early in March of this year. As part of his portfolio, Dexter plans to work with the other CARICOM Youth Ambassador out of Trinidad, Therese Lord, to host this country's first celebration of Good Deeds Day, an initiative that's done in over 90 countries worldwide. It focuses on being of service to others. Here's a taste of what Dexter has in store for the April 15 date. So that's, there's the Easter egg hunt and the bonnet. There is a school tour we're looking at doing, going to about four or five schools, doing good deeds, giving away some cupcakes, doing a little cultural presentation, but also trying to address some of the issues like bullying. So we're looking to try to do a little anti-bullying facilitation session and little other things within the schools and top it off on the final day, which is the 15th, the Sunday itself, with a fun day. We're looking at the Montgomery Field, engaging all the different NGOs. We're looking to bring out some people from the different children homes and that kind of thing, just for a nice day of fun celebration. As a CARICOM Youth Ambassador, he's already received training to manage intercultural and interreligious conflict. Dexter hopes to pass on his knowledge by hosting a religious sensitization workshop later this year. Mr. Wilson also plans to encourage other youths to get into the world of business. In my capacity as CARICOM Youth Ambassador, I believe I can encourage other young people to really get out there within, because there's a lot of risk within the world of entrepreneurship, but at the end of the day, it's all about getting up again and keeping going. You have to keep on going, you have to keep trying, keep learning, work together, collaborate, um, uh, get mentorship, work with those who have, have done it before, because at the end of the day, we have to achieve the, the outcome, you know what I mean? We, we need to 
take Trinidad and Tobago to the next level, and our generation is the generation to do it. You know? Dexter received positive feedback and support from the Tobago House of Assembly on his plans as a CARICOM Youth Ambassador, something he's really excited about. As such, Dexter hopes to work closely with the THA in realizing his initiatives for the island and its youth. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We've got to take a break, but coming up next, we'll tell you about the musical talent scheduled to perform at the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you are looking for that feeling of home away from home while vacationing in Tobago, this is the right place. Even the colors of the villa were carefully selected to retain that relaxing feel. Now, one of the most looked forward to events in Tobago is right around the corner. The countdown is on to the Tobago Jazz Experience 2018, and this year's event promises to be one filled with marvelous music performed by some well-known neo-soul artists. But don't take my word for it. Listen up. With bated breaths, music lovers waited for the official lineup of artists for Tobago Jazz Experience 2018, which runs from April 27th to 29th. Well, the announcement has been made, and there'll be two nights of events this year, Jazz in the East Caribbean Night on April 28th and World Music International Night at Pigeon Point Heritage Park on April 29th. That's why I love her. Neo Soul and R&B American singer, songwriter and record producer Neo is one of the headline acts for World Music International Night. Neo produced three number one albums in fewer than five years. The singer has also won three Grammy Awards and was nominated for over 10 Grammy Awards. Every edition of the festival for weekends like Easter, Cal, Caribbean Airlines, has stepped up and put on the necessary additional flights to accommodate the upsurge in visitor arrivals. We expect no less on this occasion. We also expect the full cooperation of the Port Authority to the extent of their capacity at that time. American singer, songwriter and record producer Anthony Hamilton will also join Neo at World Music International Night at Pigeon Point Heritage Park. And another major act will be announced soon. Jazz in the East Caribbean Night will be held at the Speyside Recreational Grounds. Two top Jamaican artists, Taurus Riley and Tanya Stevens, will grace the stage of jazz in the East, along with local performers, which includes steel orchestras. The Jazz in the East Caribbean Night will remain a free event in 2018. For the selection of national and Tobago performers, the Tobago Festivals Commission has set up a team that includes three members of our staff, Mr. Vern Extavo of 91.9 FM and Mr. Lyndon Rowley of Caribbean In Excess. They are all well known in music circles, entertainment circles, and the team has started a long task of sorting through 60 or so submissions. So have you decided as yet? Once you have, you can get tickets from NLCB outlets as well as online via SunTix. The cost to attend World Music International Night is $600 for general and $750 drinks inclusive for VIP. They travel around the Caribbean Sea in 18 days and immerse themselves in the culture and heritage of the islands visited. This time around, they landed in Tobago. That's right. This island welcomed the Governor's General Cup Caribbean Air Rally 2018 in fine Tobago style. Here's more. For the first time, Tobago hosted one leg of the Governor General's Cup Caribbean Air Rally 
as the organization celebrated its 15th anniversary. Tobago was chosen as the Caribbean Air Rally's turning point, launching the second challenge around the Caribbean Sea Air Rally. The Air Rally event was launched at the A&R Robinson International Airport and saw more than 25 aircrafts and over 100 pilots and crews from the United States, Canada and Europe landing in Tobago. A reception ceremony was also held at the Pembroke Heritage Park. At the ceremony, the Secretary of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Councillor Nadine Stewart Phillips, thanked the team for choosing Tobago to be a part of this event. I just want to use this opportunity to thank Aviation Connection for their decision to include Tobago in this year's route and for the opportunity to designate the island as the official turning point for the rally. This gathering is a direct result of Tobago serving as the designated turning point for an event that is held in such high regard within the aviation community. The secretary says hosting events of this nature can only have a positive impact on Tobago's tourism sector. The arrival of this rally and the pilots and crew that come with it serves as a positive injection into Tobago's tourism business unit and we look forward to the benefits that will be felt by our stakeholders including our hoteliers, our tour operators and all our restauranteurs just to name a few. It is because of these tangible benefits that the division is eager to capitalize on the chance to make this an annual occurrence that will attract scores of visitors who are eager to explore and experience what Tobago has to offer. Aviation Connection Events Coordinator Catherine Tobias is already looking forward to next year's event on the island. I said to the uh, airport manager to better to start planning and having about 20 planes here next year and to start figuring out how we're going to park it. So get ready, we're coming with more. The Governor General's Cup Caribbean Air Rally is presented by Aviation Connection, a charitable organization that serves as the official trustees of the Governor's General Cup Canada. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time now for Have Your Say, where we ask you, our viewers, to weigh in on what matters in Tobago. This week, we give a shout to the importance of celebrating World Down Syndrome Day with this question. All right, so we're here with Miss Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. Are we asking Mr. Phil? Are we asking Mr. Winchester? I can't cooperate. March 21st, International World Down Syndrome Day. And we're here at Scarborough Methodist School for our Have Your Say segment, sponsored by T-Mobile, where we're going to be doing some giveaways and also asking the children and some of the teachers some questions here. How would you treat someone with Down syndrome? I would treat them the same because they may look different from us on the outside, but they're the same on the inside. I will treat someone with Down, Down, Down syndrome normally because it's just a condition developed from birth. I will treat them kindly because they are just humans like us. And they're not really different just by the condition. Doesn't mean you have to treat them different. For International World Down Syndrome Day, you know, we rock different color socks and stuff, but we caught up with a teacher that uh, did it full regalia, went all out and marching and everything. So we want to know, why do you think it's important to uh, celebrate International World Down Syndrome Day? We need to let the Down Syndrome Society know that we stand with them in solidarity. We want our children to know that there are other children out there who are different to you, but they are just as important as you and they don't have a disease, not a disease that they have. It's just that they were born with this condition, no fault of their own, and they have to live with it. We have to treat everybody the same. I mean, yes, they may be born with an extra chromosome or they may be born differently, but we, at the end of the day, we are all the same. We want the socks! We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. If you have a story or know of a great location we should visit, please email us at information at tha.gov.tt and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe 
safe and a very productive week.